Mark, and as Steve explained, I'm from Brighton. I work for Culture 24, and I'm one of the people who coordinates the Museums at Night Festival every year. Who <laughs> <laughs> has been to a Museums at Night event? <laughs> you are awesome. And I know there's a lot of museum folk in the crowd now, so who here has run a Museums at Night event? <laughs> oh, you guys, you are the true heroes. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to tell you a story tonight about a really unusual Museum Tonight event that we had. Um, it features a creative artist, it features a hero dog, and Yay! it culminates with me plunging into the ocean. <laughs> so, this was Museums at Night this year, it just happened in May. Um, and I don't know if you saw our um, supremely exciting BBC documentary that we had, prime time, hour long BBC TV show. This is also very exciting. But I'm going to tell you about maybe a slightly more obscure event. So every <coughs> year at the Museums at Night for the last three years, we've run a competition called Connect 10. And we've signed up 10 top artists. And venues have pitched for what they would like to do if they won one of these artists to lead a participatory Museums at Night event in their space. So this year we had artists including uh, the People's Potter, Grace and Perry. Um, we had top fashion photographer Rankin. We had um, Jeanette Paris, Jessica Vorsanger. Um, we even had Spencer Tunick. I don't know if you're familiar with his large scale nude photography installation happenings. Um, now is not the time or the place for me to tell you how I inadvertently kick-started a wave of naturism across the south east of England. Um, if you would like to buy me a stiff gin in the interval, perhaps I will tell you more. But for tonight, I would like to focus on Amy Sharrocks. Now, she's an artist who works, she's very inspired by water and the act of falling. And she's combined these in various interesting ways. So on the left, this is Invitation to Fall, where she invited people to feel the confidence to let themselves go onto a crash mat. Um, this is another of her installations, another of her happenings involving plunging into the serpentine. So she said to museums, pitch for me, I would like to do something involving falling. <laughs> now, we... <laughs> It's an interesting one. We had some, some brave, brave offers. Four museums went through to the competition. <laughs> Gallery Oldham, um, they had a fishing exhibition, and they wanted to do something about water and fishing. Um, the Harris Museum in Preston, um, they had, um, yes, they had some collections that were relevant. The Museum of Carpet <laughs> wanted to do a colorful falling down a slide experience. Um, but Swansea Museum, they took a different tack. Swansea <coughs> Museum wanted to refer back to the history of Swansea Jack, the hero dog. I promised you a hero dog. This is Swansea Jack here. Um, he was born in 1930. He only lived for seven years, but he had a remarkable gift that made him an incredible asset to the city of Swansea. He couldn't ignore a cry for help. If anyone fell into the Swansea dog, Swansea Jack would prick up his ears, drop his lead, bound over, jump into the water, and you see the strength of that dog's neck, and he would dive in and pull them out, and he saved 27 lives. Yeah, he really made a difference, this dog. Um, now, in Swansea Museum, they have various collections because he was presented with silver cups and awards <coughs> and trophies and ceremonial um, fancy collars. Seriously, they got a colour out of storage. It's enormous. You realise this dog was mighty. And he was actually named the dog of the century, for the 20th century. So that's the amazing Swansea Jack. And that was the connection that Swansea Museum saw. So, the voting opened. Um, Swansea Museum kind of had the edge because they had a celebrity who made a promotional video. Um, Scott Quinnell, um, who, I don't know if any rugby fans in the house tonight, um, okay, museum people. So, <laughs> <laughs> Scott Pennell is, um, is a former Welsh rugby player, um, played for the British Lions, and he recorded a marvellous video where you can see him in the museum and there's actually a stuffed moose behind him there. Unfortunately, I can't play it for you now, but it's him commanding the people of Swansea 
vote for us to get the artist, Amy Sharrods. I apologise to anyone who's actually Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, over the two weeks that the voting period was open, 62,000 public votes cast. Let nobody say that this doesn't work as a tool for audience development and outreach. 62,000 votes, it was immense. And I'm pleased to say, you might see where this is going, that Swansea Museum won! Yay! It got over 44% of their vote. That's terrific. Um, the next thing is, how do we actually make this event idea happen? Well, it started with a site visit. Amy and I went to the museum to see what it was like to see some of the collections, to see the spaces on offer. And it turned out that one of the challenges would be, if we want to fall into water, well, which body of water are we going to select? Um, would it be um, going outside the museum and plunging into the dock, which is full of ships, and, you know, where Swansea Jack did his rescues, where people have also drowned? Um, would it be going out of the museum collection store and just slipping into the river nearby? That could happen. Or would it be walking all the way down to the beach to go into the sea? Well, one of the deciding factors was they all had to uh, test the water quality at all of these sites. Um, and they also had to involve the RNLI. Yeah, that's an unusual risk assessment. <laughs> you have to book a lifeboat in order to do this event. Um, the challenge also was getting members of the public to see, yes, there is, this will be fantastic and I want to plunge into some icy water for art. So Amy came up two weeks beforehand and did a public event. This was really important, explaining this is the idea behind why I'm doing this. This is what you'll experience. This is what I'm hoping. And that really raised awareness and got many more people to sign up to do it. So, the actual event. Um, this is the banner outside Swansea Museum when we arrived, inviting people, ever fallen, no matter, try again, fall again, fall better. Little echo of Samuel Beckett there. Thank you to the, the English literature. Should be in the there, thank you. So we met outside the museum and processed along the dock and down onto the beach. You can see it was an absolutely stunning day for it, thank goodness, about 22 degrees. And Amy explained what she hoped, and that it would be a gentle fall, and that she wanted all of us to link hands and process down the beach into the sea together. And if anyone felt a bit <coughs> doubtful or trepidatious, that rather than turning tail and sprinting back to the towels, that they should just stand there, and hopefully the people on either side of them would encourage them to carry on walking into the icy water. And we did. And this is her starting the walk. Here we all are. This is processing along Swansea Beach. And as we moved towards the sea, we gathered more and more people from the beach who had no idea this is an art project. <laughs> <laughs> and we stepped into the water. And of course, that first, first step, it's icy. And we carried on. That's about needy, and I'm still getting me smiling, going, I can't quite believe I'm actually doing this. And by the time a wave hits the intimate areas, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, well, you might as well carry on, because you've had your shriek, it's... There's no turning back, quite frankly. So, we fell. Everyone in a row, all falling and floundering, and gasping, and laughing. And Amy hugged every single person in the water. It was, it was communal, it was almost euphoric. We'd done something incredibly strange, had a real shock to the system, and it felt triumphant. <laughs> now, <laughs> I just have you admire Bert Lancaster for a moment there. One of the key things Amy was very keen on for this was that it should be a very caring, well looked after fall, and that the aftercare um, was a very significant part of it. So we were <coughs> swathed in towels and brought back to the museum for hot chocolate and hot dogs and a screening of The Swimmer with Bert Lancaster, which uh, is directly relevant. And um, I couldn't help but wondering, I felt like something had changed as a result of this experience. So I asked some of the people who'd taken part, was it art? 
And she said yes, that it was a community thing, and that people were mixing. And they said it was fantastic. I walked into the sea and let myself go. Absolutely it was art. And uh, she was incredibly inspired. It had bound people together, a mind-opening experience, a unique moment. Do it again. It was a unique moment. I still haven't quite processed it, but it's been fascinating sharing it with you. Um, I'd like to thank my two photographers, professional photographer Carney Cello and uh, my lovely gentleman friend Nick, who took the rest of the photos. <laughs> yeah. If you're interested in Amy Sharrocks and her artwork, she's actually got a big exhibition on at Somerset House right now. It's the Museum of Water. I don't know if you've seen this, it's got lots of coverage in, um, in the papers. Um, but go along, because it's on till the 29th of June, it's free entry. Have a chat with her, she is fascinating. Tell her Rosie sent you. <laughs> I've been Rosie Clark, I fell into the sea for art. Thank you very much.